what did you inherit? What would you pass on? Do you go yourself go to conferences? Do you go to real estate conferences or coaching conferences? What do you think about them? This is also where you can book me comes into the picture because what I found was, was important for us and is also important for our clients is that your software is easily connected. Thank you very much, Kathleen, for joining us on our uh, latest Customer of the Week showcase. Uh, if I would like to introduce you, you're Kathleen Metcalf and you run a coaching company called Cambium, but would you like to give me a little bit more flavor of what it is that you do? Yes, I'd love to. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm, I'm happy to spend this time with you and be able to talk about all this. So Cambium is a consulting, coaching, and training company for real estate agents, and we work with residential, primarily real estate agents on the operations of their business. So once they know how to sell, then they need to be able to process and have systems, teamwork, and great financial management to run their business, and we help them do that. So we have a saying inside You Can Book Me, which is that you need to fall in love with the problem, not the solution. So <laughs> how would you be able to describe that problem? Is it operational capacity inside real estate businesses? Or what would you say is the problem that you are, you're, you've fallen in love with uh, to solve? So we love to figure things out and create order out of chaos. We love to bring ease to where there is potentially turmoil. And salespeople are usually trained to sell, but not necessarily to operate. So it's that classic combination of sales and administration, sales and operations. My first career was in the retail industry in recruiting and training. So I learned order and make things look nice and get everything organized. And I learned about making a match as a recruiter. And I loved it. And when I was introduced to the real estate industry in 2002, I saw the direct parallel between having been a recruiter and being a real estate agent. So I was a real estate assistant, then I was a real estate agent, then I went to work for a real estate coach. And that's where I really saw the marriage of all my background and my experience in the field being useful to all these top producing agents that I listened to my boss, the coach, coach. She had 65 clients a week and I worked for her for six years. They all reached a ceiling because their operations didn't allow them to do more. What would you say is keeping you up at night at the moment? What is a business problem that you are worried about solving at the moment? The market has shifted and the economy has shifted again, as it always will. So right now, what we see is that the industry um, dynamics have changed and agents are really looking how to be successful listing agents in particular, because there have been these class action lawsuits uh, about representing buyers and commissions and negotiating. And so now how do we create really efficient operations that allows them to stay in touch with their past clients, that helps them to have all, as much business as possible by referral, that is as inexpensive and economical as possible for them so that they can really focus on being profitable as well as having good revenue. When you started your business 11 years ago, what tool would you say you might have inherited from somebody else because it was a recommendation? And then if you were to pass on some wisdom to somebody else starting a business, what tool would you have, have you adopted over the years? What did you inherit? What would you pass on? So I used to have the Microsoft Office package and I at one point decided to let that go and go down what I refer to as the Google slide. <laughs> And uh, inside of that, this is also where You Can Book Me comes into the picture, um, because what I found was, was important for us and is also important for our clients is that your software is easily connected. So whether you use a Microsoft Office package or whether you use a Google package, when you get an email, you want to be able to upload a document. When you have a document, you want to be able to share a document. When you have a calendar, uh, you want to be able to connect that to whatever documents you might need at the appointment. What we found with the Google Calendar, as much as it is useful, um, is that I can't send reminders to my clients. They have their own settings about reminders. And that was one of the reasons why we started using You Can Book Me even more. 
uh, because we wanted to be able to have a link for people to be able to see when they could schedule with us and be able to come in. And we recommend that for real estate teams, depending on how they like to operate within themselves, not necessarily with the public, uh, but they can do that as well, but for each other. So you can see the calendars because we talk about transparency and accountability. And with You Can Book Me, we now book our coaching clients through You Can Book Me because we can set up how they get reminded and how often they get reminded. And that became a big part of in the busy world of people sometimes coaching with us from their car. And so we needed to be able to remind them uh, it's, it's time for you to take care of yourself with us uh, and then be able to have that as well with their team. Having a database that also potentially has a phone number attached to it. We now use Flowdesk because it's beautiful. And I inherited MailChimp, which was fine. But Flowdesk is more on brand for us in terms of its beauty. Do you go yourself go to conferences? Do you go to real estate conferences or coaching conferences? What do you think about them? I think there are two angles about conferences. One of which is uh, I absolutely support for myself, for the coaches that work with me, that you always want to be a learner. You always want to be learning. You want to be uh, paying attention to where can you be uh, 11% better? Where can you be 3% better, right? Like Atomic Habits by James Clear. Where can you be stacking um, that knowledge? So to going to a conference, what is your motive? If you want to learn and be in an environment of learning, okay, great. Uh, and then what is the return on that investment? If you're interested in the networking, then that's also a great motive because having that referral network um, and being able to know who's out there and who's the best is another great motive. If you're looking to directly have a skill that you're then going to apply and expect to make money in your business, that's a very specific return on investment. And so that would need to be evaluated. Is it going to cost $7,000 to go? Okay, well then where are you going to make up or double or triple that? Mm -hmm. And then is that why you're going? So I do think motive is a big part of that. My next section here is quite quick fire. You haven't got a lot of time to think. It's a would you rather. So no equivocation here. You've just got to give me an answer. Would you rather throw out your phone or your laptop? Laptop. You're addicted to your mobile now. Yeah, I think. So I convenient. Think, would you rather double the revenue you're going to get from a client or would you get in a new client? Double my revenue. I've kept clients for 10 years. I love to work with the same people. Would you rather speak at a huge conference or get in a new a new customer, a new client? At this stage of my career, I would rather speak at the big conference if I had to choose between those two. But are you implying that if you're starting up on a new business, you should never turn down business? Yeah, of, ha of having the ability to make that sale and make that impact. At this stage of my career, sharing my wisdom has become more more important. Hence, I'm happy to talk to you. <laughs> Would you rather work with a team of experts or passionate learners? Well, I love both because as long as they're both learners, but but I love I love learners and I That's have wisdom said. to share. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, last one. This is the hardest. Would you rather be known for product quality or customer service? I would have to say product quality. While customer service is of course important. We really are, are devoted to making an impact. Can you talk about an experience where you fired a customer, where you basically found a client who you realize they're not going to really benefit from your services? And how did you handle it? We have had a few where they expected something different than what we offer. And that, for whatever reason, hadn't been clear through the consultation process, through our orientation of here's what we do and how we approach it. And they were dissatisfied because it wasn't something else. Um, and it's, well, I'm sorry that wasn't clear, but this is what we do and this is how we do it. And if that isn't what you need or what you want, then then this isn't the right match. Mm -hmm. And so- And before, then, when, when was the first time you had to do that? And was it hard for you to do that? It was hard because um, I, I want people to be happy, right? And I, I'm, I'm a pleaser to a certain extent. And so I did feel like maybe I didn't, I second guess myself, maybe I didn't make that clear. I'm thinking, no, I, I did make that clear. And so for whatever reason, I don't understand why this communication gap happened, but I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to clear it now. Mm -hmm. I've given portions of money back because I also knew I was not at fault. 
So that's where the customer service piece comes in, mm -hmm. right? What do I need to do to now make peace with this mm -hmm. situation and what's reasonable? Yeah, I'm a big believer in that. Okay, well, thank you so much. This has been amazing talking to you, Kathleen. I'm sure uh, as a coach, you um, benefit so many people in their businesses and, and in your wisdom and, and the way you want to share it. And I really appreciate you coming on to talk to us about how you do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate you.